Uh, Professor uh, Bob Carter, you're a sceptic, proud of it, a geologist as well. Um, You wrote in the Australian this week, this documentary explores the science of climate change alarmism carefully and accurately. I mean, do you want to revisit those adjectives given some of the flaws that we've just demonstrated? Tony, let's think of three films. Let's think of one of David Attenborough's films, Life on Earth. And let's think of Al Gore's films, already mentioned, and let's think of Martin Durkin's films. Now, they're all films about natural history of one sort or another. They all have a story to tell. Now, let's take three people. A member of the IPCC, a sceptic, and I've lost the third film now. What's the third one? Um, well, I mean, you might be talking about Al Gore's film, but we could, uh, we could skip over the yeah, films yeah, and, and, and ask just them. And, and actually oh, and to a, the no, point. creationist, sorry, creationist. All right. Now, ask those three people which of those films is biased. And you will get three different answers because each film appeals to the value set and the ideas of the individuals. As David has said, more eloquently than I've heard it said for a long time, he's absolutely right, all scientists are trained to be sceptic. He and I are brothers. We're trained to question. You question Martin Durkin properly on some of the detailed flaws in the films. You also poured scorn on the fact he used some older diagrams. I use diagrams which are 50 years old. Science is not torn up and thrown away, it's built upon. And Martin was quite right when he said, you can't find in the IPCC a decent temperature graph after 1995. It's not true. Because it's been overprinted by this hockey stick. Now let me read you, let me just read you, Tony, the remarks of one reviewer of the recent IPCC report. Having read all 11 chapters of the draft report, I had intended to provide review comments on them all. However, I became so angry at the need to point out the above elementary principles that I abandoned the review at this point. The draft should be withdrawn and replaced by another that displays an adequate level of scientific competence. You know what? This fellow then gets counted in the 2,000 people that are supposed to be supporting the IPCC view because he reviewed it. Okay, David Caroli. There are a large number of people who get involved in the review process for the IPCC. Bob is correct. Not every single one of them agrees with every single word that's written in the IPCC. But the IPCC is a report that thoroughly reviews all the scientific literature and then comes to robust conclusions that have assessed all the science and have done it fairly and openly through a peer review process that is much, much more rigorous than was used in, uh, in Martin Durkin's uh, propaganda piece. Uh, Bob Carter, I'll come back to you because I, I don't think I still got an answer for you as to whether you still believe those adjectives you use, careful and accurate, uh, fairly describe uh, the documentary that we've seen. If you've followed uh, the story of the different versions of the global warming swindle, I can tell you, for example, uh, that the original one had a little cartoon of a volcano uh, that was spewing CO2 out into the atmosphere, and it carried the voiceover suggesting that CO2 from volcanoes puts much more, uh, is, is much greater than the amount of CO2 produced by human activity. Now, even global warming sceptics contacted Dirk and to say that was completely wrong and he had to take it out. That's yet another inaccuracy. Do you stand by what there's you said no about point, it being accurate? There's no point in discussing a film we haven't seen. Martin Durkin admitted there were errors. There's errors in every documentary film. He's been given the chance to correct them. He's corrected them. Are volcanoes more important over the short term? No. Over the long term, where do you think the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere came from, Tony? It all came out of volcanoes. And it comes intermittently over long periods of time. And when you get a huge volcanic eruption, it indeed dwarfs the output of humans. But on average, over the period of time in the 20th century, it's true to say the original uh, film made a misstatement. David Crowley, just on that uh, sure. volcano question, I mean, it, sure. I know it's not, in, it's not in the film we see now. Many things aren't in the film we see now because they've been cut out for various reasons. And there are and still many flaws complain. still in the film, a large number of scientific flaws. I mean, the f- film says that CO2 increases have never caused warming in the Earth's climate in the past. That's completely wrong. As most geologists know, 55 million years ago at the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, There was a massive injection of carbon into the atmosphere from geological processes and the temperature rose 20 degrees Celsius or more globally, much more 
than we would expect from the increases we're seeing now. So that was a flaw. There have been other flaws. The flaw about the changes in carbon dioxide being mainly natural, as you've just talked about. We are absolutely certain that the vast majority of the increases in carbon dioxide during the 20th century are due to human activity. They're due to burning fossil fuels and land clearing. We can see that from a number of different ways. Isotopic analysis, even reductions in the oxygen concentration in the atmosphere, because when you burn something, oxygen goes down. And then finally, the film says it's due to solar activity. Well, if solar activity was causing the warming, we'd expect more warming in the daytime than at night. The rate of warming would be larger in the day than at night. And in fact, most of the warming, the rate of warming is faster at night. It's also faster in winter when you would expect the summer would it warm faster it was due to solar activity. And the final nail in the solar forcing coffin is if you look higher in the atmosphere. The stratosphere is warmed by the sun when the solar intensity increases. And yet we've seen cooling in the stratosphere for the last 30 years. It is not the sun that is causing the warming in the okay. climate. All right, we're going to come back to uh, these issues in more detail in a moment. Uh, Ray Evans, uh, part of your uh, old job with uh, Hugh Morgan at Western Mining, uh, was actually combating the science of global warming. You also helped set up the Lavoisier Group. Its main target was the Kyoto Protocol. I can see you're chomping at the bit uh, to get in and say something. <coughs> yeah, I want to take issue with you, Tony, on <coughs> your pursuit of Martin Durkin on the temperature record of the last 20 years. The fact is, we have a very good temperature record of the last 29 years, and it's from the satellites, which Martin Durkin forgot to mention. And we know from the satellites, which the IPCC doesn't want to know about, the southern hemisphere is at the same temperature as it was 28 years ago, and the northern hemisphere has warmed slightly. So the argument that's been put up by the protagonists for the IPCC that all of a sudden, since 1990 or 1985, the temperatures have gone up like that is simply not true. Well, I can tell and you the, where we, uh, we, when we, when we uh, actually added the bits onto Durkin's grass, it should have been there. We took our uh, data from uh, the latest NASA and uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration uh, information. That's where our data came from. That's how we added to those graphs. If it's wrong, tell us. <coughs> well, how do you explain the fact the satellite data which I could encompass... That. Hang on, hang on. You've had a very good go, David. <laughs> very interesting, sure. yeah. How the satellite data, which encompasses the whole globe all the time, without regard to cities or oceans or what have you, gives you essentially no global warming in the stratosphere, the troposphere, since 1980. All right, there's been a slight increase in the northern hemisphere a slight, uh, and, and much the same in the southern, but... In terms of the graph that you showed uh, when you were interviewing Martin Durkin, it's not there. Now, you've either got to argue that the satellite, uh, satellite data is just wrong or that there is this huge disparity between the surface and the satellites which nobody can explain or that the surface temperature record is not right. right. And there has been so, so much criticism of the surface temperature record, particularly with respect to urban heat island effects, that you have to put your faith, I would say, in the satellite data. We have to uh, move to uh, Professor Crowley to answer your questions, because although I'm a journalist, I'm not a qualified scientist. I've learnt a bit, but not enough. And I'd like uh, Professor Crowley to... You say you can explain 